Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic topology. Today I would like to tell you um, how homology actually categorifies the Euler characters. Whatever that means, um, links are in the description as usual. So I would like to tell you about modules, polynomials, and numbers. So numbers will be um, Euler characteristics and modules will be, uh, well, some people like to say abelian groups, but anyway, modules will be um, homology. So let's have a look. So here's my diagram. So a homology, whenever I say homology, you could think singular homology in this case. Homology, uh, H star, is uh, a module, a Z module, a vector space, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's a certain structure. It has a lot of structure. It's a module, a uh, vector space, whatever you want. It. And there's a certain polynomial you can obtain from it, which is called the Poincaré polynomial, sometimes the Hilbert Poincaré polynomial, and I will denote it by P. I will explain in a second how to go from homology to P. And this is kind of a forgetting process. So P is the shadow of H. That's how you should think about it. H is, or other, in other words, H is a categorification of P, whatever that means. So let's just say P is the shadow of H. And then there's also Euler, so chi, and chi is a shadow of P in a very precise sense that I'm going to explain in a second. So what is H, H star? is actually an honest graded Z module. You can say it's, a, if you don't like the Z module, you can say a building group. And if you don't like a building group, you can say vector spaces. So let's say it's a vector space. It's a big vector space that you associate to your, uh, it's a bit a vector space that you associate to your space um, X, or in my example here that you associate to your space, the Klein bottle K. And it's graded in the sense that there's a zero homology, it's a first homology, it's a second homology. It's not just a vector space, but you can also tell um, where the various pieces of your vector space live, whether they live in degree zero, in degree one, in degree two, in degree three, and so on. Um, for example, uh, for the Klein bottle, the highest, well, Klein bottle is two-dimensional, so it's not quite trivial, but kind of uh, the highest homology you should expect for a two-dimensional space is two. It uh, turns out that H2 for the um, Klein bottle is zero. Uh, H1 for the Klein bottle is Z, my module Z. And the middle one, uh, sorry, H0 is Z. And the middle one, H1 is Z plus Z mod two. That's what it is. And you can write that down uh, in one graded module, right? So this is H star. You just kind of need to, need to make sure that you remember what piece belongs to what grading part, right? But this is a module, it's Z plus other stuff in this case. It's really it's a real honest structure. You can play games on your honest structure. You can think of um, whatever. Later you can think of something like multiplication rules and so on. You can think of pairings. You can think of linear maps between those. It's really a rich structure. It's a vector space, a module, whatever you want to call it. You can forget information. Maybe that's too much information. Sometimes it's too much. You can forget information and you get something easier. It, it might be still uh, good enough for your purposes. So the first step, step you can do from your honest module, H star, you can create a polynomial P. Uh, strictly speaking, that's a formal power series, but in all finite examples, it will be a polynomial. And it works by taking dimensions and remembering um, where you took dimensions. So they take graded dimensions. So let's say you work over the Q and you take graded dimensions. So all I'm doing is I take or a graded rank. I, I, I see here a copy of Q. Uh, if I would work over Q, I see here a copy of Q. If I would work over Q, so the Z mod two dice when we work over Q, and I see, see here no, well a copy of zero if I work over Q. So now I just record where they turn up and I just record the dimension. So I write down one for this beast. I write down one. So here's a one times secretly for this beast. And I remember the dimension or uh, the graded rank, and I do this by using a variable t. So this is t to the zero, so I don't even write it anymore. This would be t to the one. Uh, the next one would be t to the two, and it's zero times t to the two because I have a zero here, so I don't write that anymore. So the Poincare polynomial of the Klein bottle is one plus t. The Poincare polynomial. And you can forget, so I, we, we forgot information, we got a polynomial. We can forget information even more and we get the Euler characteristic. So what can you do to a polynomial? Well, it has a variable, just throw in some uh, number and you get a number, right? And that's what you do. And it turns out that the Euler characteristic is, well, it was this alternating sum. So it might make sense to throw in minus one, 
And yes, the order characteristic is evaluating um, the Poincare polynomial at t equals minus one. In this case, of course, one plus t uh, evaluated at minus one is zero. So the order characteristic of the Klein model is actually zero, right? That's what we have. We have three structures associated to the Klein model in this case. One of them is a module, one of them is a polynomial, one of them is a number, and you can obtain one from the other, uh, not quite, you can obtain uh, the polynomial from the module and you can obtain the number from the polynomial. It's kind of a forgetting process, it's a shadow type process. So in the other words, the top one is a categorification of the others. If you want. Uh, let me do another example, uh, why this is really crucial. So again, homology versus Hilbert Poincaré by polynomial versus Euler. So take the sphere, uh, so this is S1, uh, this is S2, um, and you wonder whether they are homotopy equivalent, which is not a completely trivial question. So are they homotopy equivalent? Hmm, we can't really tell, but we have invariants to test that. And it turns out that H star distinguishes spheres, which means you can tell whether two different spheres are the same. Uh, why? Because H star in this case, or HN of SD, is, has a copy of Z for n equals zero and a copy of Z for n equals D, and it's zero otherwise. So it, it picks out the D in the S to the D, right? You, you, can, you can exactly tell where it is. It picks out the D. So I can say that this one uh, would be Z plus Z uh, with, with the second copy in degree one and the first copy in degree zero. This is also Z plus Z, but maybe I should rather write Z plus a zero, so a zero copy in degree one plus Z. And then you can see they're not the same. So those two spaces are not homotopy equivalent which is really strong in some sense, right? A very, really strong statement. Um, turns out that the polynomial still distinguishes spheres because in this case, the polynomial is uh, one plus T to the D. So T to the zero, as I said, I have a copy of Z. So I also have a copy of Q in the zeros degree. So I write a one and I have a copy of Q or Z, whatever you want to say in the, the D's degree. So I write a T to the D. And I could of course still have the D here. So I can still distinguish spheres uh, corresponding to their dimension D. Uh, turns out that the Euler characteristic, in each step you lose information, right? The Euler characteristic does not distinguish spheres anymore. Um, you can see this very easily. If you take this polynomial one plus T to the D and you specialize to minus one, um, you lose a lot of information. It's just an even odd anymore. Uh, I hope I did this correct. So if, if D is even, then one plus minus one to something even is two. And if D is odd, they cancel. So all our characters, they can't distinguish spheres anymore. And it's a shadow of something richer. So in some sense, you should always aim to uh, study the something richer. Uh, here's another example, so coming back to the Klein bottle. And you might want to ask the question, is the Klein bottle actually homotopy equivalent to the circle? Of course it isn't, but how to prove that? Well, uh, my H star distinguishes the S1 from K. Uh, both of them have uh, a copy of Z in degree zero, so this is degree zero, um, but they have different copies in degree one. So they have this one is this one and this one is this one. Turns out that they have the same uh, Poincaré, Hilbert Poincaré polynomial, though the Poincaré polynomial doesn't distinguish S1 from, from K. So this copy dies in the Poincaré polynomial and if this dies, they just have the same. And of course, if the Poincaré polynomial already doesn't distinguish S1 from K, then the Euler characteristic has no chance to do that, right? It's a specialization of the Poincaré polynomial. So the homology is, is pretty good, it's pretty strong. Uh, it might be too complicated for your purposes. You might want to go to the polynomial, which is more a numerical type of invariant. And it might even be too complicated, so you might want to go to the Euler characteristic, which is a numerical type of invariant. And sometimes that's, that's good enough, and sometimes it's just not good enough, as this example illustrates. Okay, here's just a summary of what we have seen. We have three homotopy invariants we can get from one to the other in a, in a very precise way. So um, the singular homology is my graded Z module, just the, uh, the graded sum of, of the various homologies. Um, the Poincaré polynomial, you take the graded dimensions by throwing in this parameter T, just picking out the corresponding dimension. And let's say you do that over Q. You could choose your favorite field, but let's say you do that over Q. And um, yeah, so the, uh, the, the last one is then the, um, the Euler characteristic, which is obtained by specializing the Hilbert-Poincaré polynomial at minus one. 
uh, a non-trivial statement here actually is that this is this is the definition this is the same gives the same invariant as a classical counting definition of the Euler characteristic which is not quite trivial but it follows from uh, the abstract machine learning. Anyway, so what we do we see on this slide? We see a, those three invariants, and one, the top one is the strongest one, the bottom one is the weakest one in this terms of invariants. The top one is the hardest to compute, the bottom one is the easiest to compute. So you kind of need to take whatever works for your purposes. And yeah, but it also gives you the precise relationship between um, homology and the Euler characteristic. Okay, there's another point by homology. Is much better than the Euler characteristic and also much better than the uh, Poincare polynomial. It is a functor. So what does this mean? It, it, it not just associates something to you to a space, it also associates an algebraic object to a map. And neither the, po the polynomial, the Poincare polynomial, the poly Poincare polynomial, nor the Euler characteristic can really associate anything to a map. And you can, you can play several games here. Uh, one of my favorite ones is you can define for a map you have a homology gives you a matrix, basically. You take a trace of that matrix, you get a new number, you call it the Lefschetz number. And that's an invariant of the homotopy of your map. And you can prove this really extremely strong statement, I think, um, Lefschetz fixed point theorem, which tells you that F has a fixed point if and only if it's Lefschetz invariant uh, is trivial. So you can just check whether a map has a fixed point by looking at an algebraic invariant. And this algebraic invariant is basically given by taking traces in homology. And there's just absolutely nothing comparable for P and, and chi. So H is really strong. It knows about maps as well. And um, this whole procedure, it's, it's then very easy to see that actually um, the Lefschetz number of a self map from the, from the ball to itself is never zero. And I now realize that I've messed up my statement. So it's not zero if and only if it has a fixed point and you check um, for example, for if you want to prove the bar fixed point theorem, you just check that this invariant is not zero, which is almost trivial because the homology is trivial. And you can just, you, you can get a one line proof basically uh, of the bar fixed point theorem, assuming that you already have the machinery running, which is pretty good. And you can't do that with neither P nor chi. It, it really is a, because homology is a functor, it knows about maps as well. Anyway, I already uh, wanting this video is already way too long. So what I wanted to explain here is how the Euler characteristic comes from uh, homology in a very precise way. There's an intermediate step, which is this polynomial, which is usually very useful in practice, actually. Um, and there's a very precise procedure to go from homology to the polynomial. It's taking dimensions to go from the polynomial to uh, the Euler characteristic and specializing at t equals minus one. And <laughs> at each step of specializing, you lose some information. And the top one is kind of the strongest one, the hardest to compute. The bottom one is a nice computable one, but it might not be perfect as an invariant. So you kind of need to choose which one you like the most in the, the situation given at hand. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.